hope. I, I, I haven't been online. I actually don't, I haven't even had a chance to look um, on the on the audience piece to see who's in the room today, but I have got to say, I am so impressed by every single leader that's come to the table today to take up the space for you. For you that are watching, I want you to know that this is what we're meant to do. We're meant to stick together. We're meant to rise each other up and support each other. So my next guest is uh, Karen Fonseth. She is the CEO of Dash. So it's in the waiting room, Karen, I'd like to welcome you to the stage. Karen is a highly respected chief executive officer and currently the CEO of Dash, which is the direct action and support of community. Her sweet spot is managing and developing complex organizations, both provincially and nationally, from startups through to multi-million dollar corporations. Karen is an experienced and analytical board director with extensive experience in corporate and board governance, strategic planning, insurance, audit and risk management, finance, communications and media relations, human resource management, government relations, standards and policy. And to top that off, she's an extremely inspiring woman with a story of resilience. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Monica. Uh, it's, it's so great, great to see, see you. you. It's so great to see you. However, I can't see you because your camera's not on. So we're going to have to turn on your camera. Yeah, that's a problem. So, you know, after that fabulous introduction. There uh, we are. You're live. Did you notice that IT was not in that introduction for a particular reason? <laughs> right, because we figured it out. Yes, and I, anyway, it's really nice to see you. Well, it's fabulous to see you. And I was I was hoping we've we've had um, a couple of blank screens. I know Victoria popped on and um, I was so happy that the camera's all working. And I have to say, give a shout out to my tech team in the back there. You're doing an amazing job, PSAV, for bringing on board such great leaders like yourself, Karen, to have the time to talk about leadership, resilience, moving forward, what we can do to help and support women in business. Now, I specifically asked you to be on the Success Summit today. You're a very inspiring woman. You have an incredible story of resilience and you've just done so much in your career, accomplished great things. So I want to ask you before we get into that, um, how has your adversity, and maybe if you want to touch base a little bit about your story, prepared you for the impact that COVID-19 has brought? Well, adversity. adversity. Uh, okay, touch base quickly. No, uh, you can take as much time on this space as you like because your story is significant, Karen. And I believe that, you know, when people are wondering, you know, gosh, I feel like I'm just in the middle of this nightmare because it's it's literally a nightmare for most people right now that are trying to dig their way out, pivot left and right. They've got lots of things on their plate, but this is a moment of growth. And so, you know, I want you to dive into that part of that story that was that pivoting point and, and that really pivoted you forward. So, okay. Um, well, you know, grew up in a, you know, uh, loving household, but uh, a family that really, really struggled to make ends meet. And, um, you know, so both my brother and I had to get jobs that, you know, back then, the earliest you could work is, was 15 years of age. And, and I, I recall a day on a swing set when I was about to turn 15 and be able to get my worker's permit about all the things I wanted to buy back then, dating myself, but back then I think minimum wage was dollars and something so <laughs> dating myself and uh you know all the things that we could help our parents out with and um you know and and so you know took the bus to work every day you know held down as many jobs as I could possibly held down two full-time jobs at one point and and um you know after going to school and just realized I you had to work no matter what. And from there, you know, I, I 
was blessed to have two beautiful young daughters and um, not so blessed to, uh, you know, be separated when I was, my daughters were uh, nine months old and about two. And I remember that time as one of the most challenging in that, you know, day that, the day my world fell apart and I looked down at my girls in bed laying next to me and, you know, a nine month old and two year old. And I, I remember thinking, how can I possibly do this? How, how, how can, how can I do this? And, 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 you know, work full time and pay the bills and, and go through, you know, what turned out to be a awful, 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 uh, uh, legal situation that the system only makes worse for you. Uh, the system destroys families. Uh, they certainly don't help you. They just uh, tear you apart and tear apart families. And uh, and once you're in, you, you never get a chance to get out. Um, so worked worked through that, made sure that I put a happy smile on my face every day. And um, people at my current job, um, they found out about it um, after the divorce was all said and done, probably about four, four years later. Uh, I kept it to myself and um, put one foot in front of the other. And, um, and then recently, um, about four years ago, suffered a horrific concussion that, um, wow, it was clawing. I clawed my way back from that one and I counsel people now um, that get referred to me through friends or people that heard about my concussion and, and the research I did to get better. And, um, you know, I'll talk to, and interestingly, no, it's been, it's been a couple of men too, um, that I'll talk to them and, and just give them hope that it does get better um, as you go through some of those deep, deep, dark, dark, dark places. And again, you know, being a single mom and there's a lot of responsibilities and being a CEO and just, there's not a lot of options other than doing your best to dust yourself off and get back out there and fall down again, dust yourself off and get back out there. And uh, pretty challenging, awful, 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 awful times. So Karen, I have got to say, you and I connected and we've become like very connected because of our shared stories, shall we say? Um, single moms, you know, my son was seven months when I became a single mom. So there's a lot of things that we can relate to each other's stories that not a lot of others can relate to. Um, the other significant piece is the extensive legal experience that we've both had, um, you know, like extensive. And I really do applaud you for now speaking up and saying, you know, that justice system is broken. It destroys families. Um, it destroys lives, right? So I, I applaud you for having the strength to, to share. I think we need to talk more about that. So um, stay tuned. We are going to talk more about that. But I want to commend you on how you kept putting one foot in front of the other. It is so easy to say those words, but it's hard to do when you're in it. So yes. maybe you can describe how you set your mind, that how, how you put yourself in that resilience mindset to put yourself one foot in front of your other. Was there anything that you can share with those that are watching that are in that space right now, whether they be a single mom and an entrepreneur, throw that one together. You know, um, not having a, 
safety net, you know, um, and then COVID. So let's give them some tools and resources, how you were able to get one foot in front of the other. Um, you know, that's a really tough question because you're right. When you're in it, you just, I guess it was, I, I refused to stay in it. You know, I refused to keep that blanket over my head. Um, you know, I looked at my daughters. I refused to take no my entire life as an answer. Uh, that was that was not an answer I have ever ever accepted. And um, nobody wants to be in that place. I don't believe. And well, I don't believe any of us want to be in a bad space. Uh, so it's it's starting starting with the little successes and recognizing, wow, today was a little bit better. And thinking about what made it better and repeating that. But mostly it was celebrating the little successes. Mm. And um, that gave me strength. People around me gave me strength mentors gave me strength and and also also sharing sharing the story you know a lot of people are very private when you're going through a tough time i was very very private and until i started sharing with a couple of close friends or a mentor you know your doctor you know whoever you trust um, as soon as you say it out loud it all of a sudden doesn't seem as bad because you have somebody carrying the weight with you. Mm. So that, that was a big part of it as well. I actually really think that's gold. When you share it, somebody yeah. is sharing the weight with you. That is actually, I, I think we need to write that down and, and put that on a sticky note. That's a quote, because I think that's really important for people to share when they're rebuilding. Um, when they're pivoting, it's when you share, when you ask for help, asking for help is hard to begin with mm -hmm. as a woman. Why do you think it's so hard for us to ask for help, Karen? You know, I think that we have grown up to do it all, you know, be, be it all at home, um, you know, have to do more in the workforce i you know and, and i'm speaking for my generation you know it, it i'm not so sure it's changed that much yet we're working to change it uh you know i think our resumes have to be stronger right we have to work harder to get uh have to work harder to get you know a c-suite job we have to you know break the old boys network right to get on those boards and um I believe it's more difficult for women and I believe it still is. It's changing. It's changing uh, with more gender equality. But if you look at boards, you look at people in uh, women in CEO positions or in, in top executive positions compared to our male counterparts, we're not even close to 50, 50. So I think that's, I think that's the reason. Amazing. Now, I, I have to say, you know, I'm looking at, I'm kind of distracted with the great big certificates on your wall. <laughs> so I know that you are a big advocate for continuous learning. And so I, you know, I would love you to share about your continued journey with your education. Um, you're a Harvard graduate, yes. you know, Congratulations. Um, so let's talk about using the opportunity right now to stand up from the crowd and what women can do to do that. Well, firstly, as you said, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate. Uh, it, it does help you stand out from the crowd. Um, and it, it packages you in a, in a different way you know, and um, 
and no matter what age, I think it, it changes the level of respect that, that you have. Uh, but I also believe it was, it, it was important for me to do for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, you know, I can't speak for others, so I shouldn't speak for others. So what it did for me is it gave me a real level of confidence, right? To have, to have that education backing. Right, where people go, wow, well, we only have one Harvard grad at the table. Wow, well, let's talk to, you know, Karen's the only ICD, you know, and person sitting at this particular table. So Karen's the expert on governance. So it's just um, the credentials gave me confidence. So, you know, learning is wonderful. It, um, it's great to have on your resume. You um, help, it helps you advance your career in, in however many ways, but it also gives you confidence mm. to speak out. And women need that confidence. Amazing. And, you know, I know that it was, we, we talked about this in the podcast. So for those that are watching, we had an amazing um women of inspiration podcast that we actually did during COVID-19 it was you know I just weeks into it I said Karen we've got to do this podcast we've got to talk about resilience to get people unstuck um and then we did a follow-up and we, you were sharing about um you know taking action is probably the most important step and sometimes it's very very scary and we almost talk ourselves out of doing these things that you know, we'll better ourselves to bring confidence, like your Harvard journey, you know, you, you remember getting on that plane and almost going, well, there's the jetway, I'm going to head back in there because it's yes. scary. I haven't been to school in years. So I was terrified. What words of advice can we leave our audience with Karen about taking action on your dreams and owning that space? You know, I believe make a plan. You know, we all have dreams. So follow through on them. You know, I, I, I took a chance and and applied to, you know, three Ivy League schools thinking, what's what's the chance? Right? What's the chance? And I got accepted to all of them. And I thought, okay, Karen, here you go with, you know, shooting for the stars again. And now you got to grab that star because, you know, I, I remember, you know, we talked about it sitting, sitting on my sofa the night before. Going, oh my gosh, what have I done? What have I done? I, you know, it's non-refundable. I got to go. I, now, I, now I have to do this thing. And, you know, there was people from, um, I think, 100 two different countries in that class, in that graduating class. And, you know, when you walk in, you're in a different country, you know, different city, you're living, you have a living group, right? That you eat, breathe, study with. Um, it, you know, beyond the classes and, and keeping up with that, because it was an, it was the condensed master's course. So it was a two year course condensed into five months. So I believe, I believe it was 300 case studies that is done typically over two years condensed into uh, five months. So you fell asleep reading, you woke up reading, um, but I'll tell you, 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 you come back having learned so much, you come back with a thinking differently and having met people from around the world and you know best experience ever i don't think anyone would ever say you know furthering in their education is a bad experience maybe when you're in it <laughs> it's really difficult but afterwards you know you come back and, and it's wonderful and um so worthwhile just just push go have a dream give it a shot and um you won't regret it Thank you. Those are the words that I was waiting to hear. Just do it. Take action. You won't regret it. 
And I think that is the perfect way to wrap up, Karen. Um, I look forward to actually talking to you further um, for those that are listening about developing that business plan for you personally. Um, we didn't get to talk to you about that today. So there will be more. There will be many more conversations and about how to get women on boards as well. Um, your experience is incredible, extensive. And I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your story of resilience today and your nuggets of wisdom that, you know, um, you know, getting people to think about credentials give you confidence. I think that's really well said. Um, so in this time of pivoting, you know, maybe that's just, you know, um, seeing what we can do to, to move forward and get more education. It, it is really the, the key to success, I believe. So thank you, Karen, so much for joining us and um, looking forward to having you back. You're a 2009, uh, sorry, 2020 Woman of Inspiration nominee. So we look forward to um, celebrating the nomination journey with you. Thank you so much, Monica. It's been my absolute honor to be part of this. Awesome. Thank you, Karen. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Oh, okay, so thank you so much. Uh, that was Karen Von Seth. She is the CEO of Dash. Now, Karen shared a really great story, and that was one of the success stories that I was really um, weaving into this success summit is we've got leaders sharing leadership journeys, we've got motivational stories, we've got inspirational stories, but you know, the stories from women that have achieved great success, their roads have not been paved smooth. And I want everybody to acknowledge the fact that whatever road you're on right now, um, it's probably a fairly bumpy road. Maybe some patches are smooth, but it's got cracks in it 